Ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know that um, your wait will soon be over. And you're just trying to straighten a couple of things, and we'll be officially starting this afternoon ceremony. Just waiting on a queue. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to stand as the national anthem is being played. This probably will be the longest time you're standing, uh, just to get a little exercise. Just getting the computer lines together.
that's not enough. No, 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 that's it. That's it. Almost there. I see the electricity commissioner wanting to ascertain what's happening. Maybe. It's not a matter of power, is it? No. remain standing for the national song. Thank you. You may be seated. Her Excellency, the Governor of Anguilla, Delini Daniel Silveratnam, the Honorable Premier of Anguilla, Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster, the Honorable Minister of Infrastructure and Communication, Utilities, Housing and Tourism, Mr. Hayden Hughes, the Honorable Minister for Home Affairs, Mr. Kenneth Hodge, the Honorable Minister of Social Development and Education, Ms. Deanne Kentish Rogers, the Honorable Minister of Sustainability, Innovation and Environment, Mrs. Quincia Gums Marie, the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, Mr. Merrick Richardson, members of the opposition, representatives from the Governor's Office and Foreign Commonwealth Office, members of the clergy, representatives of Kelly, T. Kelly Construction, members of the board and directors of the Anguilla 
Air and Seaports Authority, members of the media, and I see representat representation from the Anguilla Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and as mentioned earlier, the Electricity Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are present, as well as listening via the World Wide Web, welcome. I greet you well on this occasion. As people would like to say, it is an auspicious occasion. The Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport Redevelopment Groundbreaking Ceremony. What is development? It's a process which creates growth, progress, positive change, or the addition of physical, economic, environmental, social, and demographic components. The purpose of development is a rise in the level and quality of life of the population and the creation or expansion of local, regional income and employment opportunities without damaging the resources of the environment. Development is visible and useful, not necessarily immediate, and includes aspects of quality change and the creations of conditions for a continuation of that change. And this is coming from a branch of the Society for International Development, SID, which is a peers foundation. Development is not an event. It's a process. And so, over 50 years ago, we had what we know, some of us may know, as the Anguilla Walbeck Airport. And because of pioneers such as Clayton G. Lloyd, Anguilla satisfied the International Aviation, Civil Aviation Organization, and thus the Walbeck Airport became the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport. Clayton J. Lloyd, or first Anguillian aviator. And so July 4th, 2010, we had the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no surprise that moving forward from the events in 1967, 68, that we are here again with another revolution, revolutioning, revolutionizing our entry to Anguilla via a state-of-the-art airport. And there are individuals and companies who are here this evening, this afternoon, to be able to indicate to you what kind of progress has been made. And so this groundbreaking ceremony is being held. So again, greetings and welcome. Of course, none of this would be possible without paying due respect and homage to him who has sustained and brought us thus far. And so I invite the Reverend Damien Hughes to invoke God's blessing on our proceedings this afternoon. I know the chairman said that when you are standing, it would be the longest time that you stand. But may I invite us to stand as we pray. God of all dominion and power, we gather at this time and in this place, not because of the constitutional and political power or intellectual acumen or technical expertise wielded by the men and women gathered here this afternoon, but we gather because of your grace and your mercy. And so on the occasion of this groundbreaking ceremony to signal the commencement of the redevelopment of the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport, we look back over the strides made by our island, even as we envision, we shape and hope for that which is to come, ever mindful that as a people we have come this far by faith 
and by the presence of your spirit with us. We thank you for the beauty of this day and for your presence with us today as we come together to celebrate. We gather in faith and belief that the, the new redeveloped airport and all the attending improvements will be a source of growth, development, innovation and expansion for Anguilla and her beloved belongers and residents. We pray your special blessing of wisdom and safety upon the contractor, subcontractors and all employees. In their moments of despair and fatigue, energize their spirits and bodies physically and spiritually and keep them emotionally secure in the knowledge of who you are and whose they are. Great architect of the universe, we pray that you will grant fair weather over the period that the works are to be done so that the work may proceed swiftly and by your grace we may gather here again to celebrate the work completed. Bequeathing God, you have given us a beautiful island and you in your wisdom sought to bring us together under the banner of national growth and development. In this season when we reflect on the transformation that your son Jesus Christ brought into the world when he came, may the commencement of these works redound to the national transformation of our island. Amidst the varied challenges facing us as a people, we pray especially this afternoon for the continued collaboration and partnership reflected in the Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office of His Majesty's Government, the Government of Anguilla, ASPA, all in pursuing the sustainable national development of this island. God of fulfilling prophecies, you declared that through your prophet Jeremiah, that you knew the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper and not to harm, plans to give hope and a future. As you fulfill some of these plans through this project, cause us never to doubt your ability to always provide for us as a people, to unite us as one nation, and to prosper us beyond imagination, not just for today, but always. Into the enabling and secure hands of Jesus Christ, we commend this project. May his grace, mercy, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be in the midst of it throughout its duration. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, Anguilla, we are so blessed. For those of you who may not know, my name is Andrew Niles. I am your chairman for this afternoon and also the chairman for the Anguilla Air and Seaports Authority. We have the media here this afternoon and as such we take great pride in the assurance that this afternoon will be for posterity. I now invite Mr. Kendall Richardson, Quality Assurance Manager in the Ministry of infrastructure, communication, utilities, housing, and tourism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to adopt the protocols that has, that has already been established. I have prepared a few words on this paper to commemorate this occasion. I promise it won't be long and I will not be given a history lesson, as I'm sure the Minister of Infrastructure <laughs> will provide the necessary dates and times. <laughs> Although it is a bit hot, this is indeed a pleasure to stand here today to deliver the project overview on the first phase of the redevelopment of the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport. I believe it was a bit over a year ago, I delivered a vote of thanks at the groundbreaking ceremony at the Bloin Point Ferry Terminal. Many ceremonies later, we are prepared to move the earth again, but this time, it is finally at the airport. This is a clear indication that Angola's ports of entry is a top priority for not only the government of Angola, but the UK government as well. This is a monumentous occasion and for an aviation enthusiast like myself, I dare to say this is a big deal. In June 2021, Her Excellency Delaney Daniel Silveratnam, 
and the Honorable Premier, Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster, announced plans to develop the airport master plan and outline business case. In order to address, firstly, the aging airport terminal building, and secondly, the restrictive airport runway. After many months of gathering and analyzing data, numerous stakeholder consultations, and lots of strategic planning meetings, a specialized group of consultants led by Mr. Greg Cuneo of Avia NG completed the airport master plan. The completion and immediate implementation of the airport master plan signaled a new phase in Angola's aviation development with the primary purpose of establishing a rationale and a phase development concept for the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport through the Economic Resilience Program. Today, we are embarking on that very first stage of this development plan. This phase is referred to as the Airport Terminal Building Enabling Works. As the name implies, the purpose of this project is to provide the necessary facilities that will enable the construction of the new airport terminal building. This project will involve three main scope items. A new car park, main apron expansion, and a south side taxiway. As the terminal building will be located in the space that is currently occupied by the current car park, it is necessary to construct a new facility that will accommodate the increased vehicular traffic that we have all noticed since the commencement of American Airlines last year, as well as the arrival of Sky High Aviation's Embraer 190 that services the route between Angola and Dominican Republic. The 3,121 square meter car park will be located directly to the west of our current position and will include over 90 car park, park installs. The second item is the apron expansion, which will be located on the main ramp directly east of the current cargo facility. The introduction of, a, of larger aircraft called for additional space and the leadership of the persons here in attendance did not hesitate to answer that call. An area just under 3,500 square meters is the first stage in a major apron expansion that will double the size of the current apron once the terminal building is completed. For this project, it is important to create additional space for larger code C-type aircraft that have quickly become a regular site in Angola. So regular, in fact, that starting next week, December 18th, we will be seeing the code C-type aircraft at least 11 times per week. Again, this is a big deal. And the final stage of this project will be the creation of a taxiway on the southern side of the airport. This taxiway was conceptualized for two main purposes. The first is to relocate the current cargo facility to the south side of the airport, as the current location will soon be cleared for the second phase of apron expansion. The second purpose is to provide the fine folks in the air traffic control tower additional options when there's ramp congestion on busy days as arrival and departure times are critical to the efficiency of the airport and the airlines that service them. This new creation will connect to the current southern taxiway known as Delta, then span westward to intersect the runway at taxiway Alpha, which is across from the western ramp and again at taxiway Bravo, which connects the main ramp to the runway. This semi-parallel taxiway will provide increased efficiency within the air traffic control network, as well as create a dedicated ramp area for cargo operations, which will be separate from the passenger ops. In closing, it is important to note that this project consists of a mountain of work with tight timelines for completion. Many hours, months, Days, sorry, days, months have already been invested in this project by the folks at the governor's office, the consultant team at Avia NG, the Ministry of Infrastructure, the Angola Air and Seaports Authority, various government departments, including the Ministry of Finance, Department of Lands and Surveys, and the team of professionals at Kelly Construction. Although this is a huge task, 
Although there is a huge task ahead, I am certain that the right skill sets and the dedication that is required to complete this task on time and on budget are currently in the right place, here and now. I would like to also advise the general public and the stakeholders here at the airport to use caution during the period of construction. With any project comes logistical and safety challenges. This will be no different. Our primary purpose and has always been to, our primary purpose is and has always been to enhance the safety of the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport while meeting and exceeding regulatory requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. We know that your task is not an easy one to ensure that the works are done to a very high standard. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, permit me to include in the protocol our Deputy Governor. Um, I, I presume the reason why I may have omitted him, because on your program there's a slight change in that he is yielding to his superior in the comments. And um, as such, you know, we, we erred, I erred. So, Deputy Governor, Honorable Perrin Bradley, we acknowledge your presence. The project here at the airport is also under the auspices of the Anguilla Air and Seaport Authority. And as such, we have amongst us the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Sherman Williams. I'd like to acknowledge his presence. So at this time, I invite Her Excellency to present her remarks. Adopting the protocol established and uh, certainly recognising the Deputy Governor and I as one team. It gives me great pleasure to be here today to mark yet another important step forward in the development of Anguilla's critical infrastructure. Uh, when I first took up post um, back in January of last year, some of my early conversations with the Premier focused on where next after the Anguilla programme a responsive program to the devastation of Hurricane Irma and how we needed to focus and drive more strategic investment in respect of Anguilla's economic sustainability and growth. As Anguilla weathers the storm of the post-pandemic economic downturn, we need to build on the success of the Anguilla program as the Premier recognised in those earlier conversations and to focus on infrastructure projects that will continue to bolster the economy. With that in mind, during the first half of last year, my team within the Governor's Office and I worked closely with the Premier and the Ministries of Finance and Infrastructure to secure UK government funding for what we now call the Anguilla Economic Resilience Programme. It is a tribute to the determination, focus and hard work of so many individuals, not to mention the tenacity of the Minister of Infrastructure, that in only 18 months, the Anguilla Economic Resilience Programme not only secured funding, but actually delivered critical projects, including the refurbishment of the Carteret Boulevard, the refurbishment of the airport roadworks, and of critical importance to Anguilla's economic future, delivery of a credible, rigorous, and detailed long-term aviation master plan to upgrade our airport in order to ensure regulatory compliance and expansion of passenger capacity. <laughs> such delivery in such short time frames is nothing short of impressive and particularly so given we were still in the midst of the COVID lockdown. I would like to thank all involved for their significant efforts in meeting our ambitions for delivery. 
The Aviation Airport Master Plan is a key part of the Anguilla Economic Resilience Programme, recognising the airport's critical importance to creating sustainable economic growth for Anguilla. Through the programme, and with continued excellence in partnership working, we are continuing to deliver in driving forward an ambitious timeline for the delivery of this first phase of Pivotal Works. Thank you. And in the spirit of this partnership, the Honourable Premier will now deliver his remarks. Adopting the protocol already established, I bid you good afternoon. And uh, <clears throat> certainly thank you, uh, Governor, for those uh, excellent remarks and certainly for the partnership that you have forged and for your care and concern for the people of Anguilla because you have shown since you're almost two years on this island that the well-being of the people the economic resilience of this country is foremost and forefront in your mind. I stand here on the shoulders of giants. <clears throat> you know, it is heartening to know that one of the tenets of the Anguilla Revolution in 1967 was the deficiency of an airport, and, and that is one of the things that led to the Anguilla Revolution, including dusty streets and no good port facilities. And the Honorable James Ronald Webster felt that having an airport in Anguilla with the ability to have trans transatlantic flights, international flights, was so important to Anguilla's survival that he led a revolution to that effect, and it's now 56 years later that we can say that we are going in the right direction, and I certainly want to thank all who have had a part in that. You know, infrastructure contributes significantly to economic development, both by increasing productivity and by providing amenities that enhance the quality of life. And while schools and hospitals are positive indicators of human development, and we do thank the Anguilla programs for that, infrastructure and investment in infrastructure is a barometer of economic growth. And certainly we want to they thank the UK government and the generous taxpayers in the United Kingdom for the um, Anguilla Economic Resilience Program, the four million pounds per year um, this year and committed to for the next two years, similar amounts. And also for the Anguilla Program, the 60 million post hurricane number that helps us to get those schools and hospitals, the Blowing Point Ferry Terminal, the resurfacing of the airport that has allowed direct flights of American Airlines which has enhanced our economy, improved our tourism product. And it shows that if you can have um, infrastructure products, that you can show some economic growth. And that's what helped us through the COVID-19 pandemic, because while our tourism industry was closed down and most of the economy was shut down, those projects continuing helped us to keep employment going. And then the Valley Main Road reconstruction, the airport road provided employment for our people. I'd like to thank uh, High Extensive the Governor again for her determined and steadfast commitment to making sure that these projects continued and also that she helped us to find the funding to make this possible. So an applause for Her Excellency the Gov. And certainly for past Minister for the Overseas Territories, the Honorable uh, Amanda Milling, and the Foreign, Com Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office 
for committing to the Angola Economic Resilience Program and the funding, and for continuing to push it through, even with the change of Prime Minister, the change of ministers, and now the further commitment by the current Minister for the Overseas Territories, Lord Zach Goldsmith. And I want you to give a round of applause, because I'm sure as the Minister for Infrastructure always says, they are listening. <laughs> You know, this airport development project will provide significant reward for Anguilla. It is vital to Anguilla's economic resilience and to the survival of this country and our people. It will enhance not only our tourism product by providing direct access to Anguilla from the U.S. Uh, mainland, and which is now currently through American Airlines, but will extend up the uh, eastern seaboard, but also with trade. And I know the Minister for Sustainability, Environment, and for Innovation is looking at enhancing our food security and agriculture. And so we will need that ability to trade and to move products fast, whether it's agriculture, whether it's fishing. This airport development will touch all industries here in Anguilla, financial services, agriculture, fishing, tourism, and just the ability to get from here to the next place. So I remember in 2012, before I was involved in politics, I wrote to the then His Excellency Governor Alistair Harrison talking about the need for an airport for Anguilla. I remember meeting with Lord Ahmad, the Minister for the Overseas Territories, in 2018 to discuss and wrote to him after meeting with him about the need for an airport that was capable and fit for purpose for Anguilla. And I will continue to push, and I certainly am happy and relieved that our current governor is on the same wavelength as I am as this administration is, and certainly it's good to have a minister who is tenacious and a micromanager to make sure that we get the airport that Anguilla needs to continue for the benefit and the survival and well-being of the people of this country. I want to thank you very much, thank all those involved, and thank uh, the construction, the Kelly construction. We do know you'll do a great job because the minister will be on your back daily. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Premier. We know that um, micromanaging is, is sometimes could be counterproductive, but in this case, it's necessary to ensure everything is done correctly. And of course, you know, the quality assurance manager is going to make sure, and also manager of the airport is going to make sure that things are done the way they're supposed to be done. Thank you once again. Ladies and gentlemen, moving right along, uh, we said this was going to be a quick, short, and sweet ceremony. Uh, there are some golden shovels here that I'm sure persons are anxious to get their hands on, um, but in due time. So without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Bancroft Batik, Permanent Secretary Acting in the Ministry of Infrastructure. Let's welcome him. Good afternoon. Please allow me to adopt the protocol already established. During this period of Anguilla's resurgence from the impacts of Hurricane Irma and COVID, it is indeed my pleasure to be present at this very important groundbreaking ceremony for the enabling works for the expansion of the Clayton G. Lloyd International Airport. This is the first stage of the implementation of the wider master plan that will address inter alia our physical infrastructure constraints, mainly low capacity terminal building, limited aircraft parking space, and runway length. To accomplish this objective, the government of Anguilla has procured the services of Avia NG Airport Consultants 
as the lead design and supervision consultants and Kelly Construction Company as the primary contractor. The Ministry of Infrastructure will play a pivotal role in the project management and development with Kendall Richardson, who was um, here earlier, um, giving the overview as the project coordinator, working in collaboration with the contractor and other project actors and key stakeholders. Upon completion of this project, it will enable us to better meet stringent regulatory requirements and sufficiently enhance the quality of service delivery to valuable customers visiting Anguilla. So on behalf of the Ministry of Infrastructure, it is my pleasure to extend thanks to the governor's office, the UK government, for the timely intervention in providing the funding necessary for this important project. I look forward to all involved working together to enable a successful implementation of this critical national infrastructure project. God bless, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bart Batik. Partnership is the order of the day. And without the partnership of the Kelly Construction and others, this would not be possible. So at this time, I invite Mr. Everton Dorr, Construction Manager for Kelly Construction, to give his few remarks. Good afternoon to everyone. And allow me to adopt the protocol established by Chair. I'm not usually the person in spotlight, so bear with me. First off, I'm truly honored to be here representing Kelly Construction. You know, it's at this groundbreaking ceremony, at this time sensitive and very important project. I'd like to say thanks to the government of Anguilla, ASPA, and AVNG for choosing Kelly Construction. I could promise you we're going to make you proud. Yes. So this being our first project in Anguilla, and it's our hope to have a long, fruitful relationship with all stakeholders, phase two. <laughs> uh, Kelly Construction is our privately owned company and pride itself on maintaining the ethos of quality, safety, and financial responsibility. We currently have registered companies in St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, Dominica, Guyana, and Belize. We, uh, we have worked and have ongoing works right now in St. Kitts, Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda, and Belize. With our combined expertise, we have worked on over 30 international airports and have over 40 years experience in the airfield construction. We remain committed to helping the local economy by giving local trades and businesses first preference when it comes to material, heavy equipment, purchase, etc. Journey of superior industrial equipment, I see he's in the back. He can attest to that. You know, he has been very helpful in this venture. So I want to special thank you to him. Um, we are extremely happy to be a part of this venture and are committed to producing a safe and high quality project with this time sensitive and very time sensitive outline, time frame outline. It's very tight, but I'm positive we can get it done. And with the help of the minister on our back daily, I'm sure we will. So on behalf of the directors, management, and for the team of Kelly Construction, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Doerr. And we do get the message, um, time sensitive, finish on time, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, we know you can do it. Uh, your reputation is such that um, that's why we selected you. And we look forward to the quality work that you have become known to provide. 
At this time, we will have the Honorable Minister, Mr. Hayden Hughes, Minister in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Communication, Utilities, Housing and Tourism, the micromanager. <laughs> Only if necessary. Adopting the protocol established, good afternoon. Firstly, I would like to thank God Almighty for sparing us the ravages of hurricanes and pray for many more years of the same. I would also like to place on record my appreciation for the leader of government business, for without his calm leadership and support, we could not be here today. I would also like to acknowledge her Excellency the Governor, who from day one supported our goal to redevelop the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport. <laughs> to ensure that Anguilla becomes economically independent and financially resilient and sustainability is advanced. I also want to extend my gratitude to then Minister of the Overseas Territories, Ms. Amanda Millen, and the Director of Overseas Territories, Mr. Adam Pyle, for visiting and together with Her Excellency, we were able to make the case, supported by the business case for the redevelopment and repositioning of the airport. I want to thank Mr. Stephen Turnbull, who supported, advised, and worked with my team and I to see this through. Thank you to Mr. Shondell Hodge, the Chief Fire Officer, who has never wavered in his support and advice. I want to thank Mr. Jabari Harrigan, who I will give the privilege of bulldozing the existing terminal on completion of the new terminal that is set to commence in the summer of 2023. Jabari has been invaluable, and his advice, knowledge, and patriotism cannot be questioned. Thank you, Jabari. I would like to posthumously thank my father, the late Hubert Benjamin Hughes, whose inspiration is why I am who I am. His desire to see an airport that can rival any in the Caribbean is now coming to fruition. We all know his passion to see this reality, and I am sure he would have been beaming with pride if he were with us here today. I would like to extend my gratitude to the people of Road South for having the confidence to elect me to office and to Dr. Webster for bestowing the ministries of my desire upon me. <laughs> There's a lot that can be said about the Anguilla Public Service, and I cannot swear for everyone, but I want the public to know that the team at the Ministry of Infrastructure, Communications, Utility, Housing, and Tourism put the words pop service in public service. I cannot say enough about the leadership of Permanent Secretary Karim Hodge, Fiona Wilkinson, and the team over there. But today, I want to single out Mr. Kendall Richardson. I want to say to you publicly and from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because of you, and because you do the work of three people, don't ask for salaries now. <laughs> and you continue to grind day in and day out to deliver on the promise and the mandate that is now being manifested into reality. I cannot thank you enough because without you, I could not be standing here this afternoon. To borrow a phrase from my good friend Curtis, continue to do a good work and you cannot come down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen at home and abroad, I know what I'm saying today sounds like a vote of thanks, but I want you to know I could do nothing without the belief, the buy-in, the support, advice, and hard work of the persons I mentioned previously. I am but one man, 
While it is our desire to fulfill the development goals of Chief Ministers Ronald Webster, Emil Gomes, Hubert Hughes, and now Premier Webster, nothing could be achieved by this one man standing here before you this afternoon without the advice, assistance of so many, some of whom may have slipped my mortal cerebral matter. I want, <laughs> I want to thank the Air Safety Support International, ASSE, for their continued support and dil diligence, and this Mr. Greg Cunio and his team at AVL NG for their guidance and support. Thank you. I also want to thank the detractors, but as Snoop Dogg would say, I want to thank me for all the hard work that I put in. <laughs> However, the sacrifices to relationships and personal well-being to achieve a better Anguilla for this and generations yet unborn is not a lone position. All the members of this government continues to make tremendous sacrifice. I want to thank the Honorable Minister and Elected Representative for Valley South, where this eardrum sits, for her sacrifice. I thank you for your desire to make a positive and lasting difference for Anguillians, as some may have put the pressure on you and squeezed you hard. Your strength is to be admired, and I know it will be an inspiration to our young ladies across Anguilla, the region, and the world. I also want to thank the taxpayers of the United Kingdom for where we are on this momentous day. Thank you for funding the airport master plan that will ensure that whatever happens politically in 2030, Anguilla will be on the path to sustainability. This phase of our aviation master plan will include outstanding regulatory service security compliance works to the present parking lot and vehicular access area. The enabling works for the new terminal that includes and included ground investigation surveys, environmental impact assessment analysis, and the reconfiguration of the airport apron to improve a level of service provided to passengers and crew using code C type aircraft which includes Embraer's, the Airbus A220, and A320. All of the aforementioned will form part of these works. The new South Taxiway that we are about to construct will reduce congestion to the north side of the airstrip and enable the relocation of the cargo facility, which will be accessed through the long ground road. While this announcement this afternoon is happening, works have already commenced and is expected to be completed no later than April of 2023. On budget and on time. In closing, I would like to thank the contracting firm Kelly Construction, subcontractors Richards Architecture and Surveying and Superior Industrial Equipment, and the Procurement Committee, who ensure transparency and fair play void of political or any other interference. Together, we will deliver on the promise made four and a half decades ago when we said we are out to build a new Anguilla. I would also like to thank the people of George Hill, Ray Hill, Tanglewood, the Forest, Longrong, Stacia Valley, and the surrounding areas for their patience and sacrifice as we embark on the most important infrastructure projects in the history of Anguilla. This is a shared sacrifice, and as Minister of Tourism and Infrastructure, I just want to say thank you, and may God bless you and continue to bless Anguilla. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister mm -hmm. Hughes. You certainly have taken on the role that your father had for you and ensuring that whatever you do, that you're doing to the best of your ability. Now, 
All of us are in this together. Uh, you said that um, April 2023. I think you sure you don't want to be more specific. April 30th, 2023, 12 midnight. <laughs> not a minute later. Not a minute later. But you know, you said on time and under budget. Well, yes, you know, sparing. On time and, and on budget. I like to stretch it a little and say under time and under budget. How is that? <laughs> Kelly, you're being challenged. At this time, I want you to put your hands together. Now, you may have, uh, I see Mr. Harrigan kind of adjusting his notes because he kind of stole so much of his thunder. Nevertheless, he's going to come. And I want you to put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. As the minister said, Mr. Harrigan has been very instrumental, uh, along with others, in this project. Um, he now has to take three cups of coffee a day to be able to keep up with the pace. But nevertheless, um, as Reverend Damien Hughes said, he will sustain you. A great architect has a plan. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harrigan. Please uh, allow me to adopt the protocol previously established. I say good afternoon to everyone. Today, also permit me to speak beyond just Jabari Harrigan, the executive airport manager, but also Jabari Harrigan, the resident of Walblick, Jabari Harrigan, the aviation enthusiast. Um, today is a very, very special day. Um, it marks the development of an airport that is very close to me, not just because I live close to the airport, but also because uh, a person who loves aviation, someone who has been involved in aviation his whole life. I remember uh, going, growing up and overlooking the airport and knowing all the aircraft because of the sound of the engine, uh, knowing the aircraft schedules. Um, and you know, today is a, a very big day. It's a very big day. It's a big deal. The minister stole a lot of my shine. He took a lot of my notes. And um, I think we should just grab the shovels and uh, <laughs> just get it going pretty quickly. Um, but I will just uh, run through a couple of these things that uh, he may or may not have missed. Uh, we would like to thank the United Kingdom Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office for their dedication to the development of the Angola yes, aviation sector. I know the governor in particular, she's been to the airport several times, quite often. She's seen the challenges, and she also appreciates how important uh, this industry is to the island, uh, to the economy, and to development. So thank you very much to the United Kingdom, Foreign Wealth, uh, Commonwealth and Development Office, and the governor's office. Also, we'd like to thank the government of Angola, uh, Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster and his team, and also Minister Hughes from the Ministry of Infrastructure, Communications, Utilities, Tourism, and Transport. We gotta add that extra T in there, Minister. <laughs> uh, also, we'd like to thank the Ministry of Finance for their guidance and support. Uh, this is not a clear cut and easy way of dealing with things. Um, and we appreciate them for their support and understanding and um, working with us to get through this project. I would like to give a very special thank you to Mr. Kendall Richardson, my friend, partner in crime. <laughs> Yes, for, for all of his work. Uh, we are here today really, really because of his hard work. He's telling me to, to tone it down, but we really, really appreciate you, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. 
We'd also like to thank the stakeholders at the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport for their understanding during this process, for their support also throughout the process. Everyone who's been to the airport would know that we've outgrown this airport by quite a bit. On a Saturday, you may see up to 300 passengers or more being processed through a little airport in a very short period of time. And in order to do this, we must say thank you to everyone who's been there throughout it and um, through the leaks, you know, through, through the infrastructure um, issues. Um, so, you know, we all look forward to bigger and better things, right? We'd like to thank Avia NG, the consulting company, who's been very instrumental in putting together this project. Uh, they have been uh, through the quality assurance issues, getting this plan together, working along with Kendall, and they'll ensure that Kelly Construction also is doing their part from the uh, quality, quality standards, sorry. We'd like to thank Kelly Construction for taking on the challenge, and I must tell you that this is quite the challenge. It's a very short period of time, and it will take a lot of effort and communication and support from the governmental departments, uh, from the stakeholders, from everyone involved in order to meet this deadline. This is a big deal. It's a big deal. I'd like to thank the Department of Lands and Surveys and Physical Planning for their guidance and support. And I'd like to thank the management and staff, the Board of Directors of the Anguilla Air and Seaports Authority. I particularly like to thank my staff at the airport for all their hard work and dedication. And I know they'll be looking forward to a new airport, a more comfortable setting. I know they'll be looking forward to that, definitely. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ivan Connor, the PR for the uh, government of Angola. He's done a tremendous job in a very short period of time. I think uh, we have to thank him for that. And I'd like to thank everyone who's here today. Whether you played a big role or a small role, whether we forgot to say thank you, please understand that it was not intentional. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And we say, today is, uh, today is the 12th, right? And uh, anyone who would know, uh, yesterday was actually the one year anniversary of having American Airlines here at the airport. And um, starting next week, we'll be seeing 11 flights a week. 11 flights a week. And once again, as you can imagine, our small airport is doing a lot of big things. And we look forward to bigger things in the future. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't help this, but, you know, there's a saying in Jamaica that says, we little but we talawa. Sanguilla, we little but we talawa. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have come to the end of the program for this evening. Uh, we have one final and major thing to do, and I'm going to call on Her Excellency the Governor, the Honorable Premier, the Honorable Minister for Maiku, and Honorable Deputy Governor, Mr. Lewis has graciously, graciously stepped down so that you could step in and handle one of these golden shovels. We'll have myself and Mr. Jabari Harrigan uh, to do the groundbreaking ceremony. Again, we invite you all to come across and witness the groundbreaking, the Clayton J. Lloyd International Airport Redevelopment Project. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Good job, good job. Uh, who has a backache now? <laughs> Alright, that's good. Alright. Thank you. Okay. Good, good, good. If you guys want one just standing like that, let's get one just standing yeah, like that. Definitely. Not that we're resting on our lower. <laughs> um, Mr. Niles, may I have it shift more this way? And everyone follow. Everyone will follow. There is dirt between you guys. Got ya. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> 